Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, there was a lot of good racing on the national scale this weekend, and I'm putting the emphasis on the word good because there was. The open wheel guys drove like they had bumpers and fenders, both here in North America and in Europe. And Robert Wickens, gosh, he provided inspiration to us all. We've got all this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report from Monday, July the 15th, 2019, from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. A while back, we started the Speedway Report YouTube channel. Have you subscribed yet? No? Head to YouTube and subscribe. You'll see every one of our shows. No fuss, no muss. You don't got to worry about social media. It'll just be part of your inbox. I like that. Go ahead to Speedway Report on YouTube and subscribe after the show, of course. Not right now. I don't want you to miss any of the action. We'll kick off the Speedway Report victory lane lap and tell you who won what over the second weekend in July 2019. Remember when Nashville used to have a Winston Cup race on Saturday night? I do. It was right after the Firecracker 400, and they would we would go to Nashville and run that Saturday night 420. I missed that race. No reason at all to mention that. I just thought I'd throw it in there. NASCAR's Monster Energy Cup Series was in Kentucky on Saturday night for 400 miles. My goodness, what a finish. Great run by the Bush brothers. Kurt Busch gets the edge over little brother Kyle. What a, a fantastic finish for the ages at Kentucky. A mile and a half track produced that kind of racing. Real good stuff. Xfinity Cars Race Friday night, which was won by Cole Custer, and the trucks led everybody off last Thursday. Tyler Ankrum, at only 18 years of age, takes his first career truck series win. Indy Cars were on the streets of Toronto. Indy 500 winner Simon Pagenaud was the winner yesterday afternoon. We're going to spend a lot of time on the show tonight on the streets of Toronto. Stay tuned. Over in Formula One, Lewis Hamilton won in Silverstone. Not the typical walkover through the field that you expect from the Mercedes. Yeah, they ran one too, but there was a whole lot more to this race than just that. I'll leave you with that. Let's jump to the dirt. The Lucas Oil Late Models, they made their way through the Midwest last week. On Thursday night, they raced in Granite City, Illinois. Tyler Erb was your winner on the A-Main. Friday night, they did a doubleheader. The Nightmare, Jimmy Owens, won it. Former guest on the show, go Owens. Don't root for anybody, journalistic integrity and all that, but you know. Like to see the guests on the show do well. Uh, Saturday night in Wheatland, Missouri, Owens won again. And the doubleheader last night concluded at Lucas Oil Raceway. Jonathan Davenport took the Sunday night checkered flag. Now, the World of Outlaw Late Models, they were a long ways away. They were in Grand Forks, North Dakota on Friday night. It was won by Brandon Shepard. Saturday night in Ogilvy, Minnesota, Shane Clinton was your winner, and last night in Minamoney, Wisconsin, Chase Youngins captures the A-Main. World of Outlaw Sprints were in Hartford, Michigan on Friday, taken by David Gravel. Saturday night, they were in Wilmot, Wisconsin. Donnie Schatz claims the A-Main. I was looking at, at the ARCA Series was in Elko, Minnesota, uh, for a 250-lapper on Saturday night, won by Chandler Smith. There was a lot of racing, like up in the upper Midwest. The World of Outlaw late models were up there. The World of Outlaw sprints were up there, and the ARCA cars were up there. I guess in the middle of July, it's safe to schedule the Touring Series races up in the upper Midwest there. Uh, jumping down the USAC Midgets, they were in Fairbury, Nebraska on Friday night, which was won by Jason McDougal. And uh, they ran a doubleheader because they ran on Saturday night as well. Tyler Courtney was your winner there. And last night, they made their way over to Spree Sweet Springs, Missouri. Tanner Carrick takes down the checkered flag. Right back uh, in the Northeast, where I'm from, in the great state of Pennsylvania. I'm not from, but I've driven through it a lot. In Grandview, Pennsylvania, Dylan Swinehart won the small block modified feature. And Brad Brightbill claimed the sportsman me. Now, when you read the headlines there for what they are, Swinehart and Brightbill win at Grandview. Don't you think we're in like the 80s or the 90s there? But no, it's not uh, Ray and Kenny. It's Dylan and Brad 
I'm a generation off. I'm getting up there in years. I've been around this sport for a long time. In Swansboro, North Carolina, the Cars Tours visited there. Josh Berry was your winner of the late model stock car at 125 on Saturday night. And my home track, Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, held 100 laps from my beloved NASCAR Modifieds and Jonathan Brown. Takes the checkered flags there. He's only a few points behind Burt Myers now, I think four or five or so for the season-long championship uh, in the modified ranks. It looks like a four- or five-car race as there's a pretty good gap back to Jason Myers, and he's in about sixth spot. Um, I don't think we'll jump far down there, but they got a good four- or five-driver race going for the modified title at Bowman Gray Stadium. Let's look back on the weekend that was. What inspired you? I know what inspired me and inspired, gosh, a whole lot of uh, positive thinking, energy. All kinds of good stuff came out of it. it. I wasn't in Toronto, but it was on the television, and I saw a lot. And the energy and the positive uh, feelings just came out. When you watch a story, you can't help but clap, cheer, smile, applaud maybe even shed a tear or two. A Robert Wickens returned to the racetrack and put out a marvelous performance. No, he was not in the IndyCar race, but I thought what he did was even a bigger step for him. Let's recap. As last summer, Wickens had a absolute brutal crash at Pocono, Pennsylvania, suffered a spinal cord injury. Now, Wickens has the type of injury that may may not be a permanent disability. There is a possibility for recovery on this, but it is a spinal cord injury and certainly leaves him with very, very limited mobility from the chest or the waist down. Uh, and his spirit, it, it just puts to the test and puts, an, puts out an example there for the rest of it. His crash last August, and naturally, like well, so many race car drivers, I follow Wickens on social media. Uh, I'm on his Twitter and his Instagram account, and he's constantly posting these wonderful stories. He always has right the positive energy right from his hospital bed last year up through his rehabilitation, and he's shown a lot of photographs, a lot of video, and he's done, made some remarkable, remarkable progress in his work, his exercise, his healing. Now, he's not walking on his own yet. Uh, I don't want to give that false impression. But from the time that I saw that car shatter up into the fence at Pocono last year during the 500 to where he is now, oh, my goodness, Wickens would, would inspire anybody to do anything. He, he reminds me of the get, gets a spirit of, of so, some racers that we've seen come through here with stories, yet their spirit, their racing energy, that positive mental attitude just keeps rolling. Alex Zanardi, Sam Schmidt, Daryl Gwynn, guys that went through horrible tragedies, yet they're able to, to just make of it what they can and do the best they can and make a positive outcome of this. Robert Wickens has inspired, I don't know how many, hundreds of thousands, millions, am I exaggerating on this? With his stories on social media and through his recovery. He, I've seen him uh his, his post videos of him in the gym and doing coordination exercises trying to heal his body gets ready uh the spirit that he has that he's got a smile and an attitude it, it's the type of thing i wish i had i don't wish i had the injury that he does but when i face adversary adversary adversity i'll get the right word yet yeah. uh, i tend to get down uh, i tend to mope my head goes down heart breaks tears, things that I kind of absorb that tragedy and that hardship. And I don't give off a lot of positive energy. Now, granted, it is social media. We know how everybody strategically posts everything. Wickens, I'm sure, has had his down moments, his, his moments of sadness and depression. Uh, but what I have seen it is remarkable. And this almost, we're in July now, so we're coming up on close to a year since this crash at Pocono that he suffered through. And strong Canadian, comes back in Toronto this past weekend where the IndyCar Series spent for, for their uh, a very popular stop on their tour up in Toronto. And Wickens is able to run some pace laps around the track 
in a car with uh, handheld controls, hand controls on the car. He's with his fiance, Carly Woods. They will rode around the track. Naturally, Robert was full throttle and scared Carly as she sat alongside him. They are engaged and going to get married this fall. And one of the goals of Robert is that he wants to dance with Carly at their wedding. And if that were to happen, and when the video hits the uh, internet, which I'm sure it will, there won't be a dry eye in the house, including mine. But back to Toronto, uh, the folks at Honda had the car. Aero Electronics helped with the hand controls. A uh, great sponsor for James Hitchcliffe. And uh, Wiccans took to the track, full throttle it up on the pace laps. Uh, made a parade lap before the race. He said, I'm going to open it up full throttle because I want to see what it can do. Spoken like a true race car driver. Uh, it, it, it's a quick lap around around uh, the Toronto course. Only about a minute in length or so. You get around there pretty fast. and In an Indy car anyway. But he did real good in the Honda. And to see him smile and laugh and gas up that car and go around there after suffering this amazing crash just almost a year ago and shattered the car, shattered his body. He's got a spinal cord injury, and here he is laughing, smiling, driving with his fiance, showing the world that we can get back up. You get knocked down. Why? so we can learn how to stand back up. Robert Wickens is an example for all of us to follow. Strong Canadian. Don't know what the future holds for him as far as getting back into racing. Would love, love to see him back in a race car again. We'll see if that will ever happen. I don't know, but he's, he's working on pretty much just living his life at this point. He's still got a long way to go, long road to recovery, a lot of rehab to go, but he was in that car, the, the Honda, paced the field, uh, did a parade lap ahead of time, throttled it right up. It was great to see. Nothing better than when your fiance is screaming in the seat next to you while you're throttling up a, a high-speed sports car around uh, around the city streets of Toronto. I thought it was wonderful. He comes back and he did a lap before the start of the race while the cars were gridded. He comes back and gives the command to fire the engines. Great to see Robert Wickens at the track. His story, his recovery, his health. His exercise, extremely inspirational to uh, to the racing world and well outside the racing world. If you know his story, seeing the crash, follow his recovery online, inspiration to all of us that uh, we can all climb the mountains that are placed in front of us. I got a few myself. I'm working on them. I can look to Robert Wickens as a source of inspiration. Robert, thank you. If you ever see this online, I hope you do. Thanks for you, what you're doing for auto racing. Thanks for what you're doing to the world. You're the spirit of Alex Zanardi, a Sam Schmidt, or a Daryl Goyne. Nice job, and uh, hope to see him back at a racetrack soon. And wouldn't that be a wonderful day when he climbs back into the cockpit of an Indy car and goes racing again? I'm thrilled and looking forward to when that possibly can happen. Let's step away from the ceremony and get to on-track action. What really caught my eye? We had uh, the Monster Energy Cup cars, Xfinity, and trucks. They're at Kentucky Speedway, a mile-and-a-half track. We all know what we're expecting here. Uh, IndyCar, they're on the streets of Toronto. It's a street course. Formula One is at Silverstone in the Grand Prix. Uh, nice permanent course. But we had a very big balloon air letting out disappointment in France a few weeks ago. We go up to the, the mile and a half. Fantastic finish in Kentucky between the Bush brothers. The racing in Toronto. Excellent. Looked like a short track out there. It's fantastic. Silverstone GP. Probably the best one I've seen this year on the Formula One circuit. The, the racing was outstanding at all the venues. Side-by-side, -side, passing, uh, excellent, excellent stuff. I'm going to start with uh, the Silverstone Grand Prix. Valtteri Bottas surprised the world. Well, not the world, but he surprised on Saturday with the pole position as he beat out Mercedes teammate Lewis Hamilton. Usually a Hamilton-Bottas front row. Hamilton leads, Bottas runs second. We got read the script, got the book, got the T-shirt, know what's coming. Botas gets the pole on Saturday and Hamilton in second. Yeah, the Mercedes are strong, 
But hey, maybe we got some game here. Maybe we got a race. Valtteri takes off at the start, gets a lead. There's a darn good race going on between Botas and Hamilton. They're passing. They're back. They're fourth. They swapped that lead a few times. Now, granted, Hamilton wins a lot, so I like to see somebody else. But it was cool in his home country, uh, the support he got from the fans, the cheers, the fist pumps, the war whoops. I thought it was great. Uh, Botas fights back. Hamilton up front. Not what we've seen this year out of the Mercedes duo. This was a good race back and forth between these guys. Hamilton eventually prevailed at the end. Botas gave him game, but at least there was something. And it wasn't just uh, a Lewis runaway in front of his home home track. This was good. Botas gave him game, and this was fantastic. Uh, it was very exciting race. You know, they passed each other back and forth, something that I'm looking for in Formula One that I don't always get. Uh, talk about the racing between Sebastian Vettel and Max Verstappen. Good racing again here between these two guys. Uh, except, yeah, when well, they rolled off the course, Verstappen was able to get around Vettel at uh, about midway through the race. And going into a corner, Vettel just locked up the brakes very close behind Verstappen. Boots Verstappen in the gearbox with his nose cone. Sends the two of them off the track. Verstappen rolls over the speed bumps there on the edge of the corner. The the uh, the guards. Speed bumps? Yeah, those things. I don't know what they're called. Um Rumble strips. That's the term. If I had a producer, they could be telling me in my ear. They're rumble strips. Verstappen picked all four wheels off the ground in this spin. Vettel goes sliding into the sand trap as well. The two of them, remarkably, both of them kept their engines running. They both went sailing off the track, high rate of speed. One went through the air. They both slide off, and these guys are out of the race. No onboard starters. They fail to keep running. The unbuckle, and you're done. Neither guy did that. They both kept going and uh, salvaged the day. Vettel was assessed a 10-second penalty for avoidable contact. Now, uh, you're talking to a guy that grew up in the world of NASCAR, so I understand F1 plays by a different set of rules. The penalty here is kind of self-serving, though, at that at that point. Um, neither, you know, Vettel or Verstappen uh, kept going in the positions that they had. They were both penalized pretty hard just by being punted, spun, crashed out of the race. So I see where the FIA still needs to assess a penalty. It was avoidable contact. Uh, Vettel just made a mistake. He came into the corner so hot, so hard, locked the brakes up a split second, and then booted Verstappen. The remarkable part to me was that both drivers kept going. Uh, Vettel's, you looked at the replay on this, Vettel uh, flat spotted his tires. The hot spot was was you know, blistered the tread right off. Well, no tread, but the, the surface area right off. Then he goes through the gravel trap, and the gravel made a nice little pancake right on the surface of the tires. It was hard racing. Uh, I was asked, did Vettel, you know, hit him on purpose? Is it absolutely not. He, you know, he didn't do that. These aren't stock cars where you do that on purpose. You could really mess up your own car by hitting someone else like that. And he had the brakes locked before he got into the back of her stopping. But, uh, Vettel's been the, the source of some penalties this year, of some calls, some no calls. And I'll tell you what, the, he, he's one of those guys you keep your eye on him in the race because you know there's going to be action surrounding him. I, I like a little bit of the boys have at it mentality here, but uh, Formula One, it's a different ball of wax. You can't just let guys shove guys out of the way. It's a different dynamic, different culture for that matter. You don't race like that. And you know, on an oval with a stock car, we race one way. Open wheel, open cockpit cars on a road course, you race another way. They, uh, I could see the penalty in this point. It was an honest mistake. Vettel screwed up. But, hey, what you're going to do? It was a byproduct of hard racing, but it was avoidable. I, I thought it certainly added a whole lot of excitement to their race. So Silverstone Grand Prix, two thumbs up. I'm going to give two thumbs up to Kentucky on Saturday night for the Monster Energy Cup Series. Yeah, downforce race, mile and a half track, but again, like Silverstone, like the Indy cars in Toronto, good racing. There was a lot of back and forth, side-by-side -side passing, and the finish was outstanding. Bubba Wallace had a flat 
tire and a spin with a few laps to go brought us to a green white checker and the boys have at it did they uh bush was the first one kurt that was the first guy on four new tires he went to the front when he and his brother came off turn four sideways, neither one of them lifting off the throttle, heading to the checkered flag, that that was an exciting, exciting finish to that race. That was a good, good, good race. I love the finish of that thing. Outstanding, fantastic. Tip of the hat to the Bush brothers. Thank you for providing us some hard racing and some good entertainment. Two of the least liked guys in the sport, I believe. But, boy, they treated us to some fine racing and sideways action on Saturday night. Let's get out of here with a tip of the hat to Motor Week Illustrated, which this show is based on. 535 on Saturdays, TBS, back in the 1980s. Our racer of the week, the way I went, went on and on about him, is there any doubt the spirit of a racer comes from not just winning races, but not, not just finishing on a podium and not just racking up the stats, but it comes with a mindset an attitude, and inspiration to others. Clearly, no question in my mind, they didn't have to think about this one at all. Our Speedway Report Racer of the Week this week goes to Robert Wickens. Congratulations, Robert. You are the Speedway Report Racer of the Week. Probably not the last time you're going to win that, but your story is so inspirational. That was the bigger deal than anything that I saw on track this weekend. And despite me going on and on about Kentucky, about Silverstone, about Toronto, what you did in the Honda pace car, better than any race I saw all weekend. Thanks, Robert, for showing up and showing us all how it's done when we're down, showing us how to get back up. Everyone in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of auto racing with SpeedwayReport.com. This show and all of our past ones are uploaded on the site. We've also got some racing articles to read there. You can catch up with us on a plethora of social media. The Facebook page with Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds. Racers Reunion is on Facebook. And then on Twitter, I'm at Speedway Pat and at Speedway Report. I'm at Speedway Pat on Instagram. You can catch our shows at racersreunion.com in the forum. And please subscribe to our link or our YouTube channel. You can also catch me on LinkedIn if you want. Big thanks to everyone on the live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. If you're watching a podcast, Feel free to leave a comment. I will get back to you because I read them all. Uh, please go see a race at a track near you. No better way to support the short, the support the sport than to get out this weekend and hit up your local track, whatever that is, road road course, uh, drag strip, dirt or pavement. I don't care. Get out there and go see a race. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now, on the Drag Racing List Facebook page next is Drag List Live. Bill, John, and Barbara over there with some drag racing talk. So if you're on Facebook Live with us right now, just head on over to Drag Racing List, and they'll take good care of you with the straight liners coming up at the top of the hour. I'll be back live here on Facebook in one week. That'll be Monday, July 22nd. We will look at the NASCAR quadruple header in New Hampshire, NHRA in Denver, Colorado, Indy Cars in Iowa, and a whole bunch of short track racing. Thank you for watching. I'll see all of you next week. <laughs>